The third element in the organization's structure is the chain of command, an unbroken line of authority that extends from the top of an organization to the lowest level. The purpose of the chain of command is to clarify who reports to whom. Inherent in the chain of command is authority and unity of command. Authority includes the rights a manager is given by the organization. Rights to give orders and rights to expect people to obey those orders. Authority is important because it facilitates action. Without legitimate power, managers wouldn't be able to influence their employees to the same degree. The principle of unity of command is the idea that employees should have only one manager to whom they report. When employees have multiple managers, they may experience role conflict or role ambiguity. Over time, this conflict can lead to a whole host of negative psychological, behavioral, and even physiological outcomes. Things like increased anxiety and decreased productivity. Although the chain of command structure was once popular decades ago, it's less relevant today. People have more access to information than they've ever had before, and they're more empowered to seek out that information which makes a strict hierarchical chain of command less appealing to many people. Self-managed teams and cross-functional teams are also more popular than ever before, both of which require a great deal of flexibility in terms of how the work is completed. Some modern organizations still rely on the traditional chain of command structures. Employees of hospitals, police departments and branches of the military, for example, need clear direction in terms of who to contact and when, in what situations should they be contacted and through which channels should they be contacted. Organizations that deal with life and death decisions or ones that make quick decisions may benefit more from a strict chain of command than other types of organizations.